Oh, nice. Hello, everyone. I'm Maximilian. I'm also known as MA27, and I work for Mayflower as a systems administrator and a software developer. And today I'm going to talk about one time where Nix became useful in a legacy project by accident. Also, uh, that's my first conference talk, so I'm horribly nervous. <laughs> so, uh, first of all, one confession I have to make is we never really use Nix in production. That's a, a longer story uh, I can tell you after, but it's not really part of the talk. Uh, in fact, some of my colleagues were actually kind of skeptical about Nix, but uh, more on that later. And today I'm going to talk about uh, this one time where Nix became quite useful and, uh, yeah, actually by accident. So, um, a little bit of background. Um, the software I'm talking about is a big bunch of PHP code to create uh, maintenance manuals for, like, big engines. And it uh, was planned to migrate it to a new system. So as you can imagine, there's a big bunch of data we have to migrate, and uh, one of the bigger issues is that there's a baked-in image editor. The biggest issue is, yeah, it's written in Flash. <laughs> and um, we didn't uh, manage to recompile the code, and we also had no idea what it was actually doing, because none of us uh, actually had uh, experience with Flash. But we uh, had to reverse engineer this mess, because... Um, we had to migrate like the images and the changes of the images to the new system to make sure that these images are still editable in the uh, new system. So the idea was basically to um, throw a bunch of test images against an editor and um, yeah, see what happens to better understand it for the migration. Unfortunately, uh, all of that happened in 2021 and yeah, Flash was dead. So the big question is, uh, how do we uh, revive uh, Flash for five minutes? Not that much longer, please. Um, oh, sorry. So, um, at first we were discussing approaches like uh, building some Windows VMs, but then I had an idea. I was like, yeah, hold my beer. And I uh, decided to use a Nixos build VMs. That's basically a small wrapper on top of the testing framework that Linus already told you about. And the idea was to build a recent Nixos VM and, yeah, just install a Firefox from 1609 into it because back then even we had Flash support in it. And yeah, that's basically uh, most of the magic. So I basically imported um, a tarball from GitHub with a revision from uh, Nixos 6 and 9. And I enabled Adobe Flash because even we didn't want to have it by default back then. And from this uh, package set, I imported Firefox. Also, while I obviously had to increase like uh, the memory a bit and I needed an X server, but it's not that interesting. So I left it out here. Uh, now I thought, while well, job is done, unfortunately, I had another problem. So um, Flash is obviously unfree and not re redistributable, so it is not part of our binary cache. And I had to build a few derivations on my own, but um, that was kind of a problem because, uh, yeah, the download links are dead, which is actually a good thing, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, then I came up with another idea. There's this beautiful thing called archive.org, and I basically scrolled uh, down the Wayback machine until I found a working download link and I did Nix prefetch URL. And after that, um, yeah, I had a fixed output path in my store with a matching hash so I could build the VM and yeah, job was done. And here's a um, heavily censored screenshot of the result that's basically a Nixos 2105 from back then. And in this browser, it's still called nightly because uh, in 609 we weren't even allowed to call Firefox Firefox. And uh, so basically you see uh, the gray rectangle is the part on the right and it's some kind of engine. I've forgotten what it was. And yeah, we could basically reverse engineer um, the editor with that. Okay, and that's basically it. The first thing I have to say uh, for the final notes is I hope you'll never ever need this because, well, if you do, you're in big trouble. Um, but the interesting thing is it's uh, fairly trivial to revive old applications with, uh, with Nix. So first of all, um, we have a binary cache with all the build artifacts in it, so we don't have to like bootstrap a standard env and um, yeah, compile all this stuff on our own. We can download most of this stuff, but yeah, with a few exceptions. Uh, then uh, also it's kind of cool that we can instantiate any kind of old Nix expression, so we can uh, like resume old projects uh, at some point later. And um, yeah, if we've done everything right, we. Uh, can uh, get the same build result and can continue to work on it. And that's actually, uh, I think, an underestimated feature of Nix that's uh, kind of nicely demonstrated. I yeah, just needed a funny story to uh, tell you about it. And um, I think it's important that we keep it that way. So 
Yes, we are doing a lot of cool stuff with Nix. I really enjoy all of the new features, but I think it's important to remember that this is a property that um, yeah, we should keep. And finally, a fun fact. One of the colleagues admit, admitted later that he was uh, actually kind of impressed by what Nix could do, and he uh, seems to just somehow have changed, the, uh, changed his mind. Thank you.